Well, welcome everyone. I appreciate you all joining us virtually today. Um, this is our annual 2022 BGSU Teaching and Learning Summit. Um, I think this is probably the second time we've done this online, uh, but uh, it's virtual this year and um, I'm hoping it's going to be a, a good summit. We have a lot of really excellent presenters uh, ready to go today. So today, this morning, we're going to do some opening remarks and just talk about some of the logistics of the summit and I'll give you a sneak preview of what the um, keynote is going to be about this afternoon. So again, thank you all for joining our, our summit this year. Our theme this year is teaching in the new normal, centering equity and inclusion. And our presentations today are going to be exploring the intersections of accessibility, equity, and inclusion in relation to teaching in the new normal. So my name is Dr. Chelsea Chandler, and I'm the new associate director for the Center for Faculty Excellence. I've been in this role for about four months now. I started in November, um, and I've been having a fantastic time with the team and the community of scholars that we have here at BGSU. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize the CFE team who were really instrumental in planning this entire event and um, really helped with the planning process. And they'll be assisting all day today with the moderation of all of the concurrent sessions. So you'll be seeing several of the team members within your sessions today. They'll be helping to surface questions in the chat and just serving as general guides for our, our summit today. So to introduce the CFE team, first of all, we have Holly Barber, Dr. Kristen Heidinger, and Kelsey Meyer. And I'm gonna have them introduce themselves today and then tell us which sec sessions they'll be moderating. So Holly, why don't we go ahead and start with you? Sure. Hi everyone, I'm Holly Barber. I'm an instructional designer here at the Center for Faculty Excellence. Um, today I'll be moderating Navigating Complex Academic Honesty Issues from 11 to 11.30 fostering inclusion, diversity, equity, and access through scaffolded course-based mentoring from 2 to 2.50, and making connections, best practices for professional networking adequate, adequate from 3 to 3.50. Um, I'll go ahead and pass this on to Kristen to tell you about her sessions. Good morning, everyone. I'm Dr. Kristen Heidinger. I'm also an instructional designer for the CFE, and I will be moderating sessions on student interviews as a means of assessment during the pandemic and beyond at 11. I will also be moderating the two o'clock session for interteaching, a behavioral based approach to teaching in higher education. And then the three o'clock session, undergraduate students share assessment projects on connecting course curriculums and career path perspectives. And now Kelsey will introduce herself and tell you the session she'll be moderating. Good morning, I'm Kelsey Meyer. I am the Senior Administrative Assistant in the Center for Faculty Excellence. I'll be moderating two discussions today. So the first presentation is at 11. It's uh, Dr. Allison Good's presentation, How do you use SAMR, applying SAMR model for engaged learning. And then the 2 p.m. session, Fostering Student Engagement Through Showing Empathy and Caring in College Courses. This one will be led by Sherry Horner, Alicia Merchaco, and Mariana Murillo. Thanks team. Um, I appreciate all of you and the hard work that you put into this event today. So I'll speak, I will also be moderating a few sessions. So you'll see me in the faculty associate panel, which is immediately following our opening remarks today. Um, I will also be moderating the keynote and a session this afternoon from two to 2.50 uh, that, that I'm also presenting in. So moderating and presenting called small teaching practices. And then finally, um, a lesson study session, a lesson studies in higher education session at the end of the day from 3 to 3.50 p.m. So our event program for today is um, on our Teaching and Learning Summit website, which you can see in the top of your screen on the right hand side. Um, so you can type that in and find all of the links to uh, Zoom for each of the concurrent sessions. So one thing to remember for today's event is that um, the opening remarks, which is where you are currently, the faculty associate panel and the keynote are all using the same webinar link. And to access it, you can just simply click on each of those links within that Teaching and Learning Summit website. All of the concurrent presentation sessions are going to be using regular Zoom links so that we can have some more interaction during those meetings and we can see each other. 
Um, so please remember to, to go back and check that, um, that website frequently so that you can take a look at the Zoom links and the abstracts and the, the faculty, grad students, and other panelists who are going to be joining us today. So over the course of the day, we'll have three concurrent sessions beginning at 11, 2, and 3 p.m. Concurrent session presentations are going to last the entire 50 minutes. So each presentation gets 50 minutes worth of time. I know that that can you know, be different for some conferences and events that happen. Uh, let's see here, sorry, I lost my place. Each session has a theme and you can visit the Teaching and Learning Summit website that I mentioned uh, to see the session presenters and abstracts and again, access the Zoom links. The theme for our 11 a.m. session is going to be engagement and academic honesty. The 2 p.m. session theme is strategies for inclusive pedagogy. And the final session theme is connecting across the curriculum. The summit ends at 4 p.m. today after the final concurrent session. So there are no closing remarks after 4 p.m. You're free to go and test out some of the new strategies that you're learning. And now a small preview of our keynote. I'm really excited about our speaker for today, Dr. Thomas J. Tobin, who is a founding member of the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Mentoring at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, as well as an internationally renowned author and speaker on issues of quality and teaching with technology, including evaluating online teaching, academic integrity, copyright, and accessibility. Today, he will be speaking to us about why UDL is a step zero toward diversity, equity, and inclusion. So for the keynote today, well, we're, uh, Dr. Tobin is going to be joining us at 12 p.m. and it will be again an interactive webinar session. So I'm going to provide you a brief description of the of Dr. Tobin's keynote. We work with a wide variety of students who vary in terms of their level of preparedness, socioeconomic background, family status, work responsibilities. There's no such thing as a representative university student. Because we support so many kinds of learners, our goals, processes, and methods have to be open, welcoming, supportive, and flexible enough to reach out to and honor that diversity. Our biggest collective goal is to help students to achieve their potential. We want our learners to stay engaged, come back for more, and experience their time in our classrooms as a positive part of their lives. We can all agree that making Bowling Green State University an open and welcoming space for everyone is the right thing to do. But we can't achieve true diversity, equity, or inclusion without students who feel that they are a part of and not apart from each other, our campus communities. Too often, students have little time for studying or interacting with us, each other, and our subjects beyond our formal class meeting times. If there were a way to give everyone just 20 minutes more for sustained thinking every day, that could be the difference between struggling and success. There's a way to uncover those magical 20 minutes every day, adopting inclusive design ideas in the interactions that we have with learners across campus, in courses and our service areas as well. And it's efforts that pay off, pay us all back by taking work off our plates. We have fewer students that will be poorly prepared, we'll have to do less reteaching because everyone got a concept wrong on a test. And more students will stick with hard challenges instead of dropping out. The framework of Universal Design for Learning, or UDL, powers this approach. The magic behind finding those 20 minutes has to do with access. When we think about accessibility, most of us call to mind legal requirements, accommodation paperwork, lawsuits, and learners with disabilities. But accessibility really means much more than just helping people with disabilities. It's about finding time where and when our students actually have it, often on their mobile devices. It's about designing interactions and allowing learners to take agency and showing what they know. It's about helping our students manage their calendars and their attention amid significant distractions. In our inter interactive keynote session this afternoon, You'll learn attainable techniques for lowering access barriers that produce tangible results in your teaching today. You'll also find out how to build an, on already strong foundations in the community with your colleagues. Specifically by attending our keynote session this afternoon, you'll be able to frame diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts within a step zero need for access, content, community, teaching, and the wider world. You'll define areas in your own interactions with students that are good starting points for more inclusive design efforts. 
Draft, you'll draft the steps you can take in order to affect change within the boundaries of your own available time, resources, and funds. And finally, you'll be able to speak to leadership colleagues about accessibility efforts as a mission critical imperative for all programs and services in language that resonates with their priorities. So again, the keynote will take place at 12 p.m. and it will go for 90 minutes and it'll be followed by a brief 30 minute break in the program. So you can go grab your lunch and for us to maybe grab a quick lunch and a drink of water. So now for a little bit more information about the logistics for our event today. Again, please visit the website for the summit program and the Zoom links for our concurrent sessions. Our feature pro presentations today will again use the webinar link on the Teaching and Learning Summit website. Those presentations are the faculty associate panel and the keynote presentation at noon. We'll use the Zoom webinar link. And during the webinar, you may raise your hand to have your audio unmuted to ask a question. You can also ask questions in the chat, which will be moderated by the CFE team as well. All concurrent sessions today will be regular Zoom meetings and the chat and raise hand features will be enabled as well as breakout rooms if presenters feel that they feel the need to do so. Concurrent sessions again will be moderated by a CFE team member. So if you have questions, please make sure to reach out to them. We will also have conference and event services staff who are joining us for some of the concurrent sessions to serve as technical help. Uh, so again, thank you to conference and event services as well. Jeff, you've been really helpful putting this, this session on today and we really appreciate your help too. So I wanted to take a quick moment during these opening remarks to recognize faculty members um, and the achievements, faculty members and instructors, uh, some of the achievements that they've earned this year uh, within the CFE and also eCampus. So we've got some really outstanding faculty and instructors who have earned the teaching and learning certificate for 2022. And those faculty members and instructors are Judith Clemens Smucker, Andrea Cripps, Allison Durham, Karen Ebach, Rebecca Greenwood, Amanda Hawks, Jacqueline McLean, Christine Milgy, Jamie O'Brien, Evan Peterson, Trisha Prokop, Debbie Prita Rahat, Madi Tahamtan, Amanda Taylor, and Melissa Yoon. Congratulations to all of you for earning that certificate. If you're interested in the teaching and learning certificate, please visit the, uh, the CFE website. Um, and we'll be sending links out to the website in just a few minutes here. So that, is, that information is on the website. And then also we'd like to recognize the recent recipients of the eCampus online teacher training program. Thank you for all of your hard work and dedication, each of you put into your professional development to ensure that the BGSU students have an excellent learning experience, face-to-face, -face, online, whatever modality you will be teaching in. So those recipients this year were Bridget Burke, Kyle Moninger, Cindy Hendricks, Gizem Iskan, Susan Peet, Ricky Fenwick, Randall Rare, Jonathan Kershaw, Christopher Clues, Ashley McCoy, Lance Cruz, Jacqueline Shetterly, Angela Thomas, Yen Wu, Patrick Lisk, John Sorg, Opportune Zongo, and Stacy Dudley. Again, congratulations to all of the recipients of the two certificates I've mentioned here today. Um, if you're interested in the eCampus certificate, you can visit their website as well. It's a really great training that the CFE also has a, a small hand in as well. So congratulations, everyone. I wish we could all clap for each other. <laughs> I guess you can do that in your little emoji.
Okay. And now a shameless plug for the CFE. You probably knew it was coming. Um, so again, I'm going to tell you for like the fifth time today, please visit our website for the for our upcoming March events, which I do have listed on your screen today. Um, a quick way to access our website is to use the little QR code that's there. Just take a picture with your, your phone and the, the link to the website should pop up, whether you have an Android or an iPhone. So um, the other great way to figure out what's going on at the CFE is to sign up for our monthly newsletter, uh, which again, we send out on a monthly cadence and you get to see all of the news that's happening. Um, you'll see all of our events for that month and you'll also see uh, spotlights of our faculty associates and other special events that are happening around campus and things that we're doing, projects that we're doing in the CFE. Kelsey, would you mind sending that link in the chat, please? Thank you. The Center for Faculty Excellence is also holding an open house in, uh, oh, excuse me, I skipped something. Uh, so <laughs> on the screen here, you'll see that we have new programs launching this semester, um, such as new learning communities. I know that we will have one coming up that will be a lesson study learning community, and you get a sneak preview of that this afternoon in our lesson studies and higher education session at 3 p.m. Um, so join Dr. Allison Godia and I for, and and a few other people from EDHD to talk about that, uh, that learning community and what they found in their own research doing lesson studies and how it's helped their teaching. In addition to learning communities and new programs coming up in the fall, the Center for Faculty Excellence is also holding an open house in Olds Camp 109 for our new and exciting faculty video recording studio. So as part of this open house, there will be a demonstration on how to use the new equipment that we've purchased to help you faculty and instructors be able to produce high quality videos for your courses. Some of the new equipment includes a green screen, lighting kit, an HD digital camera with a tripod for recording a professional quality educational videos. The open house will be held in Olds Camp 109 on Friday, April 8th from 11 to 1 p.m. So that's drop in whenever you're able to. And you can come check that out with Holly Barber and Patrick Lisk, who are kind of spearheading that initiative. And I'm really excited about it. We were kind of geeking out in that room the other day with the green screen and with our the black screen that we have and being able to try some new things out. So it's something very exciting. And I'm really happy that we have that for all of you to be able to use to produce these high quality videos. Finally, you may have heard some of your faculty colleagues discuss, discussing the Association of College and University Educators Effective Teaching Practices course that began this spring in, in February, in fact. So we've been, it's been about almost exactly a month as of yesterday uh, that the AQ course, that's the acronym AQ, has been happening. And we're excited to announce that we will be launching another Effective Teaching Practices cohort in the fall of 2022. For more information, consider joining one of our two virtual information sessions on Friday, April 1st from 1 to 2 p.m. or on Thursday, April 7th from 4 to 5 p.m. Both of those sessions will be recorded and we will post them on the CFE website if you want more information or can't, um, can't attend one of those sessions. Additionally, feel free to reach out to me personally or the CFE email if you have questions that need to be answered. Um, and just a reminder that the AQ Effective Teaching Practices course at this time is for full-time faculty members. Um, so grad students and, and adjunct faculty, uh, we will have other offerings at the CFE for you. Um, for AQ, it is full-time faculty members. Kelsey, can you please drop the link in the chat for the AQ information sessions? Thank you. Again, thank you all for attending today and please consider staying on for our faculty associate panel at 10 a.m. You will notice that we have 10 minute breaks in between each of our sessions today. Um, so for our 10 minute break that's gonna be starting after I finish saying this thing, um, go ahead and turn off your cameras, uh, panelists, because I know that you all are able to have your cam cameras on and we will see you back here in 10 minutes to talk about um, the kind of teaching that's happening now, how your teaching has changed in the past couple of years and what teaching is going to look like in the next five years. Thank you again, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you in about eight minutes now. <laughs>